When it comes to dual-purpose design, few companies stand out quite like Nitro. Ever since first playing their mobile titles, I've been hooked on the company's design philosophy. And if you ever check the curated editor's choice section in the App Store, I'm clearly not the only one singing their praise. Heck, you don't score the title of Nintendo of the iPhone without showing off some killer mechanics. And with a history spanning from Flash browser games all the way over to Nintendo Switch, there's plenty of examples to pick from. And that's the topic of today's video. Hey all you Nitromians, I'm Skip the Tutorial, and this is Game Bytes an analytical appreciation of the best mechanics the game has to offer. And hey, if this is your first time here, lay a big old bomb egg on that subscribe for new insights every week. The jump from the second dimension to the third dimension is nothing short of confusing, especially when it comes to platformer design. Or is it? In September of 2017, a little App Store game called Flatpak built up a whole new perspective on 2D, all the while keeping the style's simplistic logic. In a game based around platforming along the flat faces of various geometric shapes, Nitro maintains a sense of spatial awareness through the way that they handle these flips between 3D faces. Providing an elegant solution to axis rotation, the game's design centers around switching the angle of your typical XY plane of motion into a whole new route to progress. This allows players to hold on to the satisfying ease of controlling a character along a 2D space, even keeping the controls so simple that the game is entirely playable with one hand. Because of this, maneuvers such as lining up the perfect angle by rotating around numerous vertices just feels like second nature, and allows for neat on-the-fly brain teasers as you need to consider tackling each different platforming challenge with the right positioning for the right job. And if there's one thing I can point to just to gush about how well designed this particular game is, just look at the iOS's augmented reality port, which I think plays very smoothly due to the way that the mechanics multipurpose logic is handled. Forget everything you've been told about always looking on the bright side, because here, it's not always going to be the optimal strategy. In Nitrome's 2016 puzzle platformer of Hop Swap, you'll need to be switching between both sides constantly in order to succeed. And if it's a Nitrome game, you can bet there's going to be more than just one use juiced out of this, and that's exactly what happens with the world shift ability. While on a basic level, this mechanic gets some use in neat concepts such as triggering switches in one realm that impacts the other, it's the way this shift maintains consistency between both sides of play that makes it a joy to use. You see, momentum is maintained as you swap a hop between the different sides, leading to case scenarios where you need to flip the script on a huge fall and turn it straight into a gigantic leap in order to clear various huge towers. Furthermore, this mechanic allows you to constantly swap the POV in combat, where in one second you might be avoiding spikes in the bottom half, but then lining up a killer butt stomp from the top side that steers you straight past those baddies. This has players considering what's happening above them just as much as what's going on underneath your feet and vice versa. By not requiring the player to be burdened by too many button inputs or different interactions, Nitro can ask the player to always reconsider each new situation they enter into without it feeling overwhelming. Now if you're trying to sell me on your game by telling me it's a puzzle platformer, I might not be instantly hooked. But when it's a puzzle platformer featuring a chicken that lays explosive eggs, you can take my attention and my 15 bucks at your earliest convenience. Kicking off development for mobile devices, Nitrum's Bomb Chicken eventually made the jump over to PC and the Nintendo Switch, and thank goodness it did. In fact, I firmly believe that out of this initial touchscreen design period hatched the beautifully deceptive simplicity that embodies the final product's bomb layability. Just based off this premise, I'm sure many of you can get to the basic gist of how this mechanic works without even playing the title. Your explosives serve as your primary attack through the game's various enemies, and heck, because of that puzzle bit in the genre title, maybe you can use them to blow up some destructible walls as well. And while these are accurate assumptions, both are very capable uses of the mechanic, it's only scratching the surface of what Nitrum lays out with this ability. Due to the spherical stubbiness of our endearing protagonist, jumps are effectively ruled out of the equation as this little guy can't get too much of a leap. From this, you have to use your stack of bombs for any hope of verticality. And in addition to just being stacked up, these bombs can be pushed and moved all over the screen, leading you to constantly consider not just where your chicken is while playing, but also how you're placing your eggs. The game gets truly bonkers when you factor in the dangerous blast radii of each of your eggs, providing a consistent drive to act quick and risky just to hold on to your feathers. And most important of this all is that the designer is able to pack all this punch into just one main mechanic, and only ask the player to remember one key button input. If there's one thing I hold dear about Flash games, it's that they let us experience the crazy and somewhat unorthodox world of game developers' creativity. So a game where you play as a right eye trying to score back his left eye girlfriend from some dusty pirate clouds in order to bring back color to his life? Sure, I'm down. Show me to the dotted line. I'll initial and sign my name on that list. 100%. 
Releasing back on Nitrome's own website in 2013 and snagging a mobile port some years later, there's enough creativity and colorblind to fill you up to your eyeballs, all thanks to some pretty clean-cut black and white game design, which oddly hinges on the stellar use of color in the game's levels. Since our main protagonist can't quite see color, he needs to smack these various colored totems around the map to see the palette of the level elements around him. And while this can be beneficial, such as by bringing in blocks and pillars necessary to line up specific jumps, these saturations can also bring to light new obstacles to watch out for, such as some new candy-colored spikes lining the floor. For this very reason, you'll also have to keep vigilant about rinsing off in nearby waterfalls to reset the color scheme. And this back and forth can lead to some pretty crazy situations where you have to swap colors mid-jump to avoid sudden danger. You can also have multiple colors active at once, opening up the canvas for plenty of fun challenges built off the back of considering the proper color order as well. All in all, you don't need two eyes to perceive the impressive amount of depth that Nitrum squeezes out of just one key concept. Often, backseat gaming isn't exactly encouraged, but in Nitrome's bizarre mobile joyride of Stretch Dungeon, it's absolutely crucial. As you guide the escaping prisoner through various numbered checkpoints, you must contort the walls in order to keep him safe from countless hazards, such as spikes, and ultimately push him along the right path. Now even though this game is easily controlled with just one input, there's a shocking amount of versatility that spawns each time you interact with the screen. Worth noting here is that it's not just a choice to expand the walls to keep your bearded pal safe, but also when to release this button and let the dungeon return to normal. Just by allowing players to have a say in how this one interaction plays out opens up a wide array of neat level designs based around this timing, as now you need to consider both the placement and velocity of the prisoner just to properly pinball him past certain obstacles. While this entire mechanic might seem simplistic because of its straightforward use, it's through the expressively wide range of different tap timings that you, the effective dungeon master, can properly manipulate your way to great things. Back in 2015, the devs over at Nitrome wanted all of us to take a second and smell the roses, and that's exactly what they hit on with the release of Rust Bucket. And heck, with that iconic Nitrome aesthetic and an exuberantly vibrant palette, how could you not take your time to enjoy with this one? In fact, that's right on the money for what you need to do in this title. By taking the roguelike genre and giving it a new turn-based puzzle twist, this game makes sure that you take the time to consider every single action. As you hop purposely through the game's landscapes, you come to realize that every bit of the design, from level obstacles, to enemies, to even your own movement falls to this turn-based strategy key concept. And when this simple change is made, all of a sudden, every action you take becomes significantly more methodical, since you have no leniency to react real-time to threats. This makes sure that if you're going to succeed, you'll need to plot several steps ahead with every progressive step you take. Through this ever-shifting planning phase, the game makes sure that no element has the time to feel slow, since you'll be making sure to take each and every telegraphed pattern you see into consideration. Out of this comes my personal favorite part of the game. The combat, which plays out as these blissful chess matches where the weight of each move is felt with every consecutive touch of the screen. And since attacking in and of itself eats up a turn, the player is kept in this satisfying balancing act between an equal consideration of their offensive and defensive tactics. I scream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. And that was very much the case with the absolute numbers put up by the success of Nitrome's Bad Ice Cream Flash series especially on the third title's release in 2013. With the basic premise of collecting all the pieces of fruit on the screen, all the while avoiding the game's various enemy types, the design is able to deliver a surprising amount of depth onto this simplistic concept. And the beautiful way that I think they achieved this is through the core ice wall mechanic. Now this straightforward ability comes prepackaged with a lot of different emerging strategies. Since enemies cannot be killed, these walls provide the player's main tactic for blocking them off and keeping them busy so they can snag some extra fruit pieces. But where this whole idea gets really buck wild is with the addition of multiplayer as now you can use these ice pillars to freeze fruits and slow down your greedy competition. Chuck in the dual use of the ability, as you can remove the blocks of ice just as much as you can place them down, and suddenly, the basic setups of each board you face off in becomes an ever-shifting arena where you need to keep quick on your wits to survive. Hey there, if you're interested in 7 fantastic multiplayer mechanics on the Switch, then hop swap up in the top right or throw an ice wall down in the bottom right for another video. If you want to support the channel and get new game bites every week, whack a slap on that subscribe button. But with that, take care, and you have a good one alright?